In 1947, an alien spacecraft crashed in the desert near Roswell, New Mexico. The wreckage was taken to the Roswell Army Air Force Base and stored in Hangar 84, where the useful alien technology was reverse engineered. And this is what we got. Well, what we're going to do now is use this as an optical bench to do a final test on our laser diode and photodiode. Let's just get that out of the way. And so what we're going to do is mount our laser diode in one of these and our photodiode in the other, set up a little circuitry around them, and then we're going to test the laser diode at its range of voltages that we already determined that it likes to work at and see what voltages we get out of the photodiode to find out exactly how we need to design our transmitter and receiver. So here goes. First thing we're going to do is get a power supply here to run the laser off of. And uh, the power supply I was using, I had an old Radio Shack power supply that failed on me and you can see the autopsy video here. And just needed to bring up another power supply here. This is another oldie. This one's more like the one that's in the power supply video, only of some very minor differences. And the first thing is to get a transformer hooked up to the uh, input of the power supply. Get a couple of clip leads. Get these out of the way where we don't have to look at them. And the other end goes here. Okay, we should have some power coming out of that power supply. Let's put up a voltmeter. So we can read the voltage here. Is that visible? Yes, it is. The output voltage is right over here. There we go. So there's five volts out of the power supply. Now we need to power up the photodiode. We're going to kind of kludge this together. I have a battery with a connector on it. So we're going to come off the positive on the battery through a 10K resistor. Then from the 10K resistor to the cathode of the photodiode. And then from the anode of the photodiode back to the battery. So pretty simple circuit here. All I need to do is put a voltmeter on the photodiode and we're ready to go. Let's put this down here where we can see it. Let's see, I need to lift that up on something. Let's see if we can put something behind here to hold it up. I need to get another one of these cradles. They're pretty handy. Yeah, hopefully that'll stay put while we put the leads on the photodiode. So we want to hook uh, just right across the photodiode. There's one. Uh, getting a little close there just to splay them out a little bit just to keep them from touching. And there we go. So we have a 9-volt battery on there, and there's 7 point... Oh, it looks like it's... Uh, Seems somewhat stable now. Who knows what's causing the number to drift there. Now one problem we have, as you see when I flip off these lights, is that the photodiode is sensitive to the ambient light. So we're going to... Oh, well, it's not too bad in the screen here, even without the lights on. That's just the lights coming in the windows. Well, that's good enough to shoot this by. So uh, let's hook up the power to the laser. Negative to the blue and positive. Get in here without shorting something, hopefully. There we go. To the red, we're set at 5 volts. That's the maximum voltage for the laser. And voila, we have laser. We see it lighting up over there where it's 
hitting this. Now we just need to aim that at the photodiode. That's going to be a little tricky, but let's see if we can get that to go. I have to loosen this just a tad. A little too much there. Okay. Let's put something behind here to help me aim this silly thing. Oh, there we go. Oh, it's right on, right on. And look what happened to the voltage. Woo, way down to 0.2 volts, 0.02 volts. Turn off the laser and it goes up to 8.3 volts. So the laser, that's a, it's actually a pretty sensitive little diode and the laser at full power at five volts drops us down to four one hundredths of a volt. The question is, how much voltage are we going to get at the range we determined that the laser wants to work under, which was 3.5 to 5 volts? Well, we have part of our answer right there. At 5 volts, it gives us 0.04 volts out. Now, all we really have to do is decrease that down to 3.5 volts and see what we get out then. So here it goes. Hopefully we don't bump anything. too far there. 3.12893. There we go. And that takes us up to 0.16 volts. So at 3.5 volts, we get 0.1, that seems more stable, 0.14. So we changed the uh, voltage across the diode from 5 volts to 3.5 volts, and we got a change of one-tenth of a volt on the diode. Now, hopefully I didn't move anything around. Let's uh, take it back up to 5 volts just to see if we have some consistency there. About as close as you're going to get and we're back at 0.4 so we do have some consistency there so the full range of the diode we determined that its uh, linear range was 3.5 to 5 volts and the diode gives us 0.4 to 1.4 volts in that range and we can now we now have enough information to design most of our circuit we might have a little bit of trial and error we have to do in the end but now we can actually design our laser communicator so that's going to be the next video the official video two of the series designing the laser pointer now one thing i thought i might have to do i got pretty lucky here and got that i got that perfectly on that diode if I had a lot of trouble getting it to line up right, I was going to sand the diode a little bit to uh, cause the light to scatter so I wouldn't have to necessarily point it directly down the middle of the diode. If I missed a little bit, it would still be fairly consistent. But I got lucky and that just hit the diode square on. Another thing to help me aim is I might, on the final product, want to put a lens before the diode to give me a bigger aiming point. What the lens will do is as long as the light is coming in fairly parallel to the axis of the diode, it will bend that light to the diode. And so uh, that's probably a possibility for what you might want at the other end. So anyway, there's the laser, there's the photodiode, and we see how they work together. So in the next video, we'll actually uh, design the circuit. And then after that, we'll build the circuit. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible, and a big thank you to everyone for watching.